Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We'll give it a minute or so while you all start joining, and we all are very excited to have you here. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, everyone. We're going to give it about a minute or so just to let everyone join before we get started. Welcome everyone. We're going to give it about a minute before we start. Just to let everyone join. All righty, let's get started. Welcome everyone to our first Investigate Industries and Internships I3 event of the academic year. My name is Liz Banuelos Castro. My pronouns are she, her, and I am joined by my colleagues, Lauren Uckenorth and Giselle Jose from the Internship Engagement Team here at the USC Career Center. Our office is in the Student Union Building across from the seats, and we offer a myriad of different events, programs, and services. These opportunities are showcased on our website and within ConnectSC, our portal which hosts more than 20 online resources. During the next hour, you will hear from some amazing employers working in business and economics who will share their industry insights with each of you. I'm very excited to hear from them. So with that, with that we will jump right into our questions. Um, can you please introduce yourself and tell us about your organization? And Zach, if we can get started with you. Yeah, absolutely. Hello, everyone. I can't really see everyone, but uh, I'm hoping everyone is here now, uh, kicking it off two minutes after two. But uh, I'm here recruiting for E&J Gallo Winery and uh, recruiting for our sales organization and our sales leadership development program. Um, it's a highly intensive internship. It's eight weeks long, and uh, it's to really see our company in a holistic view to prepare yourself for a full-time role as the goal uh, getting into our sales leadership development program, which I think I'll talk about a little bit more down the line and a couple other questions. But um, some of the brands we represent are High Noon, New Amsterdam, Pink Whitney, LaMarca, Barefoot, Apothic. I mean, you name it, we, we got one of the best products in that sector. We're the largest winery in the world. Um, we're, we're growing to be one of the biggest uh, spirits distributors in the world. And we have one of the hottest products on the market right now with High Noon. Um, hoping that all of you are 21 that uh, maybe know some of those brands or resonate with some of them. Um, but yeah, really fun, social, competitive, fast paced environment that we work within with some of the, the coolest brands on the market. Um, do you want to go to the other two questions or just that one? Those are great. Thank you, Zach. And whoever wants to jump in next. Hi, I'll jump in. So my name is Terry. I am a USC alum, class of 2020, fight on. Um, my organization is Alpha Site. So Alpha Sites is a global information services firm. And what we do is we connect our clients who are in the spaces of corporations, capital markets, consultancies, and private equity firms um, with industry experts, um, because usually these clients have a business problem or a knowledge gap. And what we do is we go out and find industry experts who have that knowledge and connect them where they're able to have a one-on-one -on -one phone conversation and help fill in those knowledge gaps. So that's just a little bit about me and my organization, but happy to pass it off to anyone else. I'll go ahead and go next. So my name is Kim Donovan, and I am on I am on the talent development team at DirecTV. I represent the mighty college recruiting team of one, just me. <laughs> um, a little over a year ago, DirecTV separated from AT and T, and since then, it's been a real big emphasis and focus in reimagining both who we are and what we are. Um, advances in our technologies and the boom in content creation have really started a new era for us. And as the demand for media has grown constant evolvement has required commitment to staying focused and providing an entertainment experiences for our customers that are unparalleled. So we've been at the forefront of that for nearly 30 years um, in doing so by staying focused on our people and our customers. So we beam, which is traditional satellite. We say we beam and we stream, which is the streaming services for over 1 million customers. And we have internship opportunities across multiple organizations, including marketing, content, um, strategy, transformation, um, to name a few. Looking forward to talking further with all of you. Hey, I'll jump in, I guess, next. 
Uh, Michael Bolden here with Royal Industrial Solutions. I've uh, been recruiting at USC for about four or five years now. I uh, have a couple recent grads. We had an intern actually this, two summers ago who is now full-time trainee with us working out of my office here in Burbank. Um, we're in the industrial market. We're not the name you're going to see, you know, advertised anywhere on the internet or, you know, on TV, but our customers are. You watch their TV shows, you ride their roller coasters, uh, you drink their, their drinks. Uh, so we get to work with a lot of really cool uh, companies, manufacturers, theme parks, studios, um, all different types of cool organizations. Um, we're looking for sales-oriented people, people that are interested in um, engaging with customers, developing relationships, um, networking, which is, I know, a topic that we're going to discuss later today. Um, people that are competitive. I come from an athletic background. We, we do hire a ton of people with athletic backgrounds or just competitive backgrounds in general or group-oriented backgrounds. Um, we're a very social environment, spend a lot of time getting to know each other, getting to know our, our clients. Um, and so being able to bond with people is super important for us. Uh, really looking forward to getting to know you further. Great. Um, I'm Ryan Reisner. I represent Aldi Foods, the fastest growing retailer in the United States. A lot of people don't know, but in California, uh, everybody knows Trader Joe's. Aldi actually owns Trader Joe's. Aldi uh, bought them out, out in the 1990s. But um, Aldi is looking for interns, and we have a 10-week program that pays $1,000 a week, and it's an exposure to what a district manager role is when you graduate. And um, you're going to have an opportunity to learn day-to-day -day grocery operations, but also have mentorship by a district manager to work with divisional VPs and directors. When you graduate and you become a district manager with Aldi, it is over a six-figure package with a brand new BMW day one that you graduate. So we're looking to build relationships with individuals that have leadership uh, qualities, strong communication skills, strong business acumen, um, and those movers and shakers that have an entrepreneurial mindset because um, once you're uh, finished with training, you're going to be managing five to seven Aldi stores. And so leadership is a big part of us. And we are also looking to build relationships with student organizations um, and other departments. But you're going to be seeing a lot of us on campus. And uh, we hope to meet a, a lot of individuals there. And we appreciate you all having us today. Thank you. All right. I guess I'll close this out here with the first question. Uh, hi, everyone. I am Lindsay Nichols. Um, I am recruiting for Eli Lilly and Company, which is a pharmaceutical company. Uh, Lilly is a global healthcare leader that unites caring with discovery to make life better for people all around the world. Uh, we're a Fortune 500 company. Uh, we bring life changing medicines to everyone and we give back uh, to communities through philanthropy and uh, volunteerism. Uh, we have about 36,000 uh, employees worldwide right now. Uh, we have medicines in five different disease areas of neuroscience, immunology, oncology, pain, and diabetes. I'm actually recruiting for a 10-week uh, Eli Lilly sales internship. Uh, it's a program that's designed to give students hands-on experience in selling pharmaceuticals. Uh, so after completing part of the sales training virtually at home, uh, students will actually have the opportunity to fly to headquarters in Indianapolis, Indiana for a week, uh, where they'll get to experience the company culture and also get some training there as well. Uh, then they'll come back to their respective territories. Everyone is, this, uh, is designated a territory under specific district teams. And each student is assigned a mentor for the summer uh, that will assist them in territory management um, and selling skills and developing some selling skills um, and getting in the field. Uh, all interns are also provided a company car or a rental car uh, and an iPad as well, which are just a couple of the perks, as well as it being a paid internship. Thank you, Lindsay, and thank you, everyone. All of your organizations and internships sounds really cool. Um, it's too bad I'm I'm no longer eligible to be an intern, but all of our students are. And with that, we'll move on to our next question that's related. You've all shared a little bit about your organizations. Can you share a little bit about your career path to your role and why you chose this industry? I'll start. Mm -hmm. um, if that's okay. So mm -hmm. I actually worked for AT&T for almost 34 years with the last position being on the university team. And 
and being in a position that allows you to help students grow and develop through career development or readiness training to me was really rewarding. And for me, it was like, this is a great way to wrap it up, right? I'm going to, I'm going to end it here. This is, this is pretty cool and impactful. Um, but last December, I was given an opportunity to pivot over to direct TV and create and build the college recruiting and internship program. So I retired from at and on December 10th, started working with direct TV on December 16th and haven't really looked back. I love the entertainment space because things are fresh and new and, and engaging, but I didn't choose the industry. I chose the role. I'll go next. Um, so I've been with the company about four and a half years. And part of the, the reason I love this company is if you work hard, you get rewarded. Um, this is my fifth role in four and a half years. I started in, uh, in sales as a sales representative. And we have a three-phase problem, uh, three-phase program where it's sales rep, where you oversee um, a territory, then a district manager, we oversee about five to seven sales reps. And then that third phase can step into a handful of other um, facets within our company. And so I've already passed through all of those within our sales organization. I took on this role overseeing training and recruiting in our Southern California marketplace, covering from San Luis Obispo to San Diego, staffing and training all new sales reps and, and new district managers. Um, and why I got into this is I, I kind of always knew I wanted to get into sales. That's something I, I was told I, I was going to be good at from, from a young age. I like talking to people, connecting with people, work in a room. Um, and why not get into selling alcohol? It's something that, you know, as a college student, it's probably around a lot. And uh, they came and presented one of my classrooms like this. And I, I kind of started drinking the Kool-Aid and, and fell in love with the, the people that I connected with and, and everything I learned about the company. So that's why I'm here and, and I'm, I've loved every second of it. I'm happy to hop in next. So like I said earlier, I did graduate from USC in 2020. So I had a bunch of different internships and experiences um, during my undergrad that I really did enjoy, but really felt like all of them came back to being people focused. Um, I graduated from the Leonard Davis School of Gerontology and really enjoyed um, my program itself, but it was all people. And that's why I realized that I wanted to be in a people role. Um, so kind of my role at the sites. Um, we have our summer internship program, like I said, um, and it's a 10-week program where you have the opportunity to really be in front of clients and have that client interaction, but also being able to talk to industry experts and learn how to communicate effectively and efficiently. And I think that's super applicable to any role that you take on. Um, kind of similarly um, to Kim, I hopped in because I was interested in not necessarily just the industry, although we are um, industry agnostic, so you get to work with so many different clients from so many different backgrounds, um, which I thought was super important to me as well, but um, just being able to enjoy the role as a whole. So it's a little bit about how I ended up in this industry. Oh, I'll go next. Um, uh, I have a, a bit of a unique story. So my, my name is Ryan Reiser. I'm actually the president and founder of the Reisner Group. We are a recruiting company that is an extension of Aldi. And so Aldi um, selected us to help them build their college campus recruiting program. And so um, when I first started this business 11 years ago, Aldi was my first client. Today, we're the number one preferred vendor across the United States. We've uh, been on the front lines with them trying to uh, do this $5 billion U.S. expansion. Um, and uh, when I also started this business, uh, oil and gas was an industry because I live in Houston, Texas. Well, um, I pushed that aside because it was so up and down. And the one thing that is consistent with Aldi is it's food. Everybody needs food and is the most recession proof company you are going to uh, find. Aldi's been in the United States since the 70s, and there hasn't been one round of layoffs that they've had since being in the United States. When the economy is bad, Aldi does even better. Uh, all these built for times like today where it's high inflation, high taxes, because it's a natural gravitation to a company that has lower prices. And people ask, why does Aldi have the lowest prices? It's because how we run and operate the grocery stores. We pass those savings back on to the customer. And Aldi is the most green grocery store uh, that you're going to find. So they started the trend a long time ago with no bags. And um, it's an honor to be a part of it and uh, partner with USC to help Aldi grow their brand and uh, recruit uh, some of the best talent over there. I'll hop in. Um, so I started actually in catering and event sales management. Um, so I got a degree in hospitality and tourism management. 
management from Purdue. Um, and then I was working in catering services, doing sales and management. And then I soon realized that I enjoyed the selling aspect of that job a lot more than I enjoyed pretty much any other aspect. Um, so, and I've always had an interest in biology and medicine in general. Um, and it's always been important to me that I feel like I'm making a difference on the job. So kind of all of these things rerouted my career path. Um, and I decided to pursue a career in the pharmaceutical industry um, because it's focused on solving medical problems and the medications developed in the industry, obviously they save lives. So it does make me feel like I'm making an impact on, on every single day that I'm in the field. Um, I was seeking a career that allowed me to pretty much combine my sales expertise with a higher calling. And so that's how I landed on pharmaceutical sales. Hey, all right, a little bit about my background and how I ended up with Royal Industrial Solutions. I kind of touched on it earlier. Um, I was an athlete growing up and as an athlete, sometimes you don't really get the summers to do internships. So um, a lot of you guys are kind of ahead of the curve there. And just by attending today, you guys are doing the right things already. Um, I didn't really get an opportunity to do many internships. I did one internship and it was a very brief one. Um, so as I was coming out of school, I interviewed with a ton of different types of companies. Um, the thing that stood out for me with Royal Industrial Solutions was the opportunity to run my own business. Um, I went through our management training program. Essentially, it takes you through every phase of our business, everything from how our warehouse operates to our sales team and our operations. Uh, eventually, you get handed the keys to one of our locations, um, which I'm now at my second one. Uh, and I've got my sales team, my operations team, I, I hire, um, I can create roles as I need to. Um, I get to make a lot of decisions without necessarily asking for permission, obviously within reason, um, which is probably my favorite part. And that was definitely something I was looking for is the, is the autonomy. Um, you know, I, I trust my gut instincts a lot. And so we love a, a candidate that trusts their gut a little bit and they're willing to take some risks and try to make things happen on their own. Um, and the reason I chose the industry was kind of like Kim touched on earlier too, is that I mostly chose the role. Um, it probably could have been a number of industries. The industry happens to be very cool, fast paced. I get to work with a lot of different types of people. Um, and uh, the social aspect was very important to me. One of the things I did not want was to sit in a cubicle all day by myself. And so I got the opposite of that. I talked to people all day long and work with um, a ton of different types of customers and different personalities and different types of roles. That's kind of how I got here. Thank you, Michael. I love how you all sort of touched on a similar theme of sometimes you choose an industry, sometimes you choose a role. It depends and either is okay. Um, but with that, we'll move on to our next question. You've all shared about your journeys and a little bit about your industry and organization. What advice would you offer to students interested in a career in your industry? And Lindsay, if you want to get us started. Sure, I'd love to. So I would definitely recommend doing your own research on the industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry and there's lots of moving parts and so many roles. So if you're not interested in a sales role, there's, I mean, there's a multitude of other roles that you can look into within the industry. Um, I would also say making connections is very important within the industry. So if you find a connection, or you just met one connection, um, but if you can make some connections within the industry and pick their brain, ask them questions about what their day-to-day -day -day duties look like, um, and if you're specifically interested in sales, definitely get in touch with me. I'm gonna echo off of that. Specifically, I think connecting with people is the most important for any industry, but specifically in my industry, kind of having that understanding. It's a little bit of a different nuanced industry um, in our global information services firm, but for sure, like checking out on LinkedIn, seeing if you have those connections, also making sure like, hey, you know, I know this person goes to you, went to USC and also goes to their company. Like, can I set up a one-on-one -on -one chat, coffee chat, 10 minutes? minutes of their time. And usually most time, like, of course, for the Trojan family, everyone's really open. So I highly recommend doing that and seeing if it is a good fit for you, because not every role is going to be a good fit for you. But asking those questions um, is really important. So you kind of get an overview of what you're really looking for um, before joining an organization that might not necessarily be the best fit for you. Yeah, that, that was a great call out. And uh, to piggyback off of that, um, I'd say, if you want an opportunity with Aldi, I say, uh, while you're in school, get involved. 
uh, expose yourself to more than just showing up to class. Um, we're looking for individuals that are involved in student organizations in a leadership capacity that's uh, doing more for the community or that is taking on um, a little bit more than um, the bare minimum. Um, try to find some type of leadership qualities, whether it may be a part-time job or maybe project management or resident assistance type of role, um, and then uh, develop your skills. And when it comes to interviewing, your job is to interview the uh, company just as much as it is to interview you because um, I have a saying that you're, you spend more time awake than you do at your job than anywhere else. When you go home, the majority of time you spend home is sleeping. And so you want to make sure that that job is very fruitful and you're going to be excited every single day you wake up over there. But uh, when it comes to Aldi, develop your communication skills, be involved, and be a high achiever, and you can land an opportunity with us. So I'm going to go a little bit different. So my advice is, in, if you're in an industry that's hyper-competitive, so we're in a hyper-competitive industry, the streaming, streaming industry is. So for us, it's important to understand how to apply and use technologies that support data-driven decision-making and how to how to integrate into data analytics. So understanding how to make those types of decisions will really help establish your position as someone who's strategic and logical and has those skills that are transferable to any organization within that company. Um, outside of the technical piece, I would say having demonstrated passion about the industry is super important as well. So having that high level of passion really is intrinsic and it comes out when you're speaking. So when you're talking about what you're doing, when you're talking about your experiences and making that connection to the industry that you're interested in, it screams volumes. So make sure that passion is there as well. I would say in our industry, um, a lot of people, especially upon first conversation, they hear Royal Industrial Solutions and they think industrial market, you gotta be an engineer, right? We have a ton of roles. In fact, the majority of our roles are not engineers. My degree was in sociology um, with a concentration on organizations. So I took all social behavior and business classes. Um, and now I, you know, I run it, I have a technical team and they handle a lot of the really complex portions of things. Um, I can open the door and have that introductory conversation and understand the big picture goal of a customer. Uh, but you don't have to be an engineer. Yes, we love engineers as well. Um, but we're we're pretty major and background agnostic. And I think one of the things that you should keep in mind, especially um, you, you freshmen, sophomore, juniors, everybody really, um, you don't have to be a finished product. Everybody at this point in, in, your, in your life, where you're at in your career, you're so early on, wherever you land, they're gonna teach you. Um, don't overestimate what you think your competitors, as far as other candidates um, know how to do already. They're gonna train you, they're gonna teach you regardless of the industry. Um, just find someone that's going to invest that time in you and invest in, in your future. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, for our industry, again, don't fear the technical piece so much. We'll, we'll teach you that portion. We're just really looking for a sponge. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point right there. I think the big thing for me, just when it comes to networking in, in this process of trying to find an internship or a job is just be curious. and. and it's such a big decision in your life that you, you, everyone feels they want to be right, right off the gate. So take your time, ask as many questions as you can um, when it comes to recruiters or people that uh, graduate, graduated from USC or, you, you know, your personal network from back home, your parents network. Just be as curious as you can to do as much research as possible, because there is plenty of people out there that are willing to answer those questions, myself included. I will be as transparent as you want me to be, whatever question you ask, I will give you the answer to the best of my ability. And that's how my company operates. If, if you meet anyone on campus, because I have a recruiting team that's on campus, um, just ask questions because that's how you're gonna learn about the industry. There's plenty of you know social media accounts we have. You can go onto our website. There's, we, we have such a wealth of knowledge at our disposal with this internet and, and all the different people within your guys' networks that ask the questions and people are going to help you out because that's that's kind of the dream right the tide rises all ships everyone's here to help each other out absolutely thank you zachary and thank you everyone i think you all touched on this a little bit in your answers about the importance of networking and connecting with others to really understand the your organizations industries and really get a good insight into it 
Um, with that said, do you have any tips or advice for our students on how to network? And Michael, do you wanna get us started? Yeah, I'll get started. Um, I think I'll, you guys are already starting. I, yeah, you guys are starting to send some LinkedIn connections and stuff I see already. So um, show up to events, talk to people at booths that you may have no idea what the industry is, what the company is. Um, just talk to people and just get an understanding that there's so many things out there. Everybody knows, you know, people that are, I guess, more commercially known. Um, but there's so many things happening in the background that you may not be aware of and so many um, partner companies and all these different things that are happening. Um, that exposure is really important. Go to events, join groups, um, join clubs. Even if you're just, you know, you're, you're joining a club and you're, you're attending their meetings, they're gonna have different employers and different organizations show up to those events. Find a club that's really active, not really, you know, there's, there's clubs out there that exist that or to have it on your resume that you're in a club, be active in a club, get a club where they're, they've got a plan, they've got a schedule, they've got strong leadership, um, learn from, from that, get that exposure to as many things as possible. Um, diverse groups of people from different majors and um, events and, and groups, as many as possible, so that you can kind of get exposed that way too to their experiences and kind of gain from some of their knowledge as well um, from their internships or uh, or meetings and all that kind of stuff. So just as many different data points really as possible is what you're trying to collect at this point in your in your guys' lives. I'll go. Um, when it comes to networking, talk to as many people as possible. The practice makes perfect. I know um, it can be uncomfortable at times be a student and having a conversation with somebody that ultimately is judging you. Um, and, and just know us recruiters and, and individuals, we understand you're still in school and that um, you can be green in certain areas. So I think the more practice that you have, the better. Um, a way to separate yourself from the pack as well is um, pitch yourself, get, get a strong 30 second elevator pitch on who you are, what separates you and rehearse that because first impressions do last when it comes in the interview process. Um, a firm handshake, uh, great body language, um, being able to articulate your answers in a star method are pretty important. Um, but uh, the networking piece is really important because the more seeds you plant, the more opportunities you're going to have, and you're not, you're not going to land every single job. And um, I think you've you got to set yourself up for success by uh, doing your homework, talking to decision makers, finding a good coach and a mentor that's really going to guide you and get you there. And find a connection at a company. LinkedIn is at your disposal. You have great career services um, at your school. You have a strong network. Leverage that as much as possible. And you'd be amazed at how many people are willing to pay it forward to give you an opportunity there. And speak with enthusiasm and conviction. That's a really big part because your energy is going to be a magnet for, for what you're trying to look for. Yeah, and I was going to talk about the career services piece too, Ryan, and, and because it's awkward and it's uncomfortable. So take advantage of those resources that are right in your backyard. Your career services team has access to alumni and companies that they work with that may be in the industry that you're interested in. Those are going to be friendly people to start that networking with because they're connected with your career services team. And request it, it, inter informational interviews as well so you can learn more. Um, after you have a brief networking interaction with that with the person or the parties. Yeah, I'll jump off of that as well. Um, I've mentioned like for myself, I feel like I did not take enough advantage of all of the career center opportunities that we really had at USC. And I look back and go, oh no, why didn't I? Like, I feel like I could have practiced more of my interviewing skills and maybe I would have gotten a few more jobs beforehand or better internships. You never know um, the different opportunities that you could get from the extra practice. But I really recommend taking advantage of that. And of course I've like honed on this up like multiple times, but 
but the Trojan family is here. And I think it's super, super important to take advantage of that. Everyone's so open. Um, for me, actually finding this role, I ended up reaching out to someone who graduated a couple of years before me. We had no mutual connections. I didn't really know her at all. She was in a completely different school, but I had that opportunity to connect with her. And I hopped on the phone with her, learned a little bit more insight. And when I came into my interview, um, I already knew a lot more about the company than I was supposed to essentially. Um, but in regards, um, regardless, it I feel like it's a good opportunity for you just to be able to leverage your network and um, the Trojan family is a huge network. I think mostly everyone covered it, but I really like the um, the emphasis on the importance of um, staying connected and making these connections and being involved. Um, I think another thing that's huge is um, maintaining those connections. So once you make a connection, um, continuing to see it through and, and um, touching base with whoever you're meeting, um, because you never know, um, even if a, an opportunity sounds like something you're not interested in now, um, you know, you may be interested in the future. So really um, tapping in and using your resources and getting to know people and then cultivating those connections. Zach, I want to give you a chance to answer the same question, networking. Classically kicked me out and kicked me back in. Um, but I think all, I didn't quite hear everyone, so I'll just take a quick short one where um, your guys' school, whether it's the, the, biz, uh, the business school or just the overall career center, has so many resources for you guys to network. And a lot of companies post all their jobs, all the things they're doing, all on there internally. All you have to do is just show up or ask the right questions. Um, shameless plug, we'll, we'll be having a perfecting your elevator pitch tomorrow. Um, they're gonna come meet us at the career fair, um, come meet us at the Marshall Career Fair. We're gonna host office hours, September 19th. Um, so all this information is at your guys' disposal because you guys have career centers and career services that are here to do this exact thing of helping you network and help you find the right career opportunity. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, everyone. I think you all gave some really good insight into networking. Um, I see some LinkedIn's in the chat, everyone. So if you want to connect with our panelists, um, feel free to do so. They have welcomed you too. We also have our Trojan Network link. If you want to get to know some alumni Trojans, they are literally signing up to help you. Um, but with that, we will shift more into internships. Um, I know you've all spoken a little bit about internships within your organizations. Um, but can you share what qualities you seek in ideal interns and what would make our students the most competitive applicants? Um, Ryan, if you want to get started. You're uh, muted. Uh, thank you. Um, well, to land an internship with Aldi, um, it's pretty competitive. Um, you have the opportunity once you have a successful internship to actually be a student ambassador on campus and we'll pay you for that. But um, if you want to be successful, um, a GPA is pretty important. Um, Aldi prefers a 3.0 or higher, um, an individual that is involved, um, a person that um, has a strong work ethic and a desire to work more than 40 hours a week. Um, with a district manager role, you're going to be required to work a consistent 50 hours a week, and that's why they'll pay you 100000 plus uh, right when you start. But strong communication skills, leadership uh, skills, um, the ability to have difficult conversations is a pretty important uh, attribute. And that's uh, an awkward moment for many people. And uh, I think having that confidence is going to be a, a very strong uh, part of this, too. Um, but also to express yourself pretty well and to be an empathetic leader. Uh, emotional intelligence is a really big part of business nowadays. And empathy is the form of leadership that is really starting to drive performance and increase retention rates. And so um, if you have some of those things and if you're able to speak to some life uh, situations that have given you some um, grit or uh, some type of resilience, I think that's gonna get you a long way because uh, with Aldi, you're gonna be mul wearing multiple hats. When I said an entrepreneurship role, you're gonna be wearing a marketing hat. You're gonna be wearing an HR hat. You're going to be wearing a finance and accounting hat, supply chain hat, because you're ultimately going to be running multiple businesses and connecting the dots from afar. So if you're well-rounded, that's going to get you there. Um, and I think, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it.
some of the skills that we look for um, at alpha sites um, are, of course, drive, adaptability, and results orientation. Um, in this role, you need to be adaptable. You are going to be dealing with clients, and clients have an ever-changing mind um, sometimes. So being adaptable is really important, as well as like a results orientation mindset. Um, we do have like targets in the role, so it's just important to be able to be results-oriented. If goals get you excited, then this might be a great fit for you. Um, we also look for individuals who have been active in different club organizations, whether they took on leadership um, opportunities in them. Um, we look for a 3.0 GPA or higher for our internships. And um, earlier, like we said, um, initially, if you're interested like more in a client management or a people-centered role and you've had previous experience on that, we really recommend you showcase that um, in your resume upon application, I mean, upon applying. Yeah, and I would I would echo a lot of of that. Um, in addition to the identified technical skill sets that someone needs, as outlined in an app in a in a job description, that demonstrated leadership or involvement on and off campus really shows the whole candidate, not just the 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 technical alignment in terms of degree program and what what technical skill sets do you have, what certifications do you have. It really kind of shows you know, you as a whole. And we do look for interns who are naturally curious and have a desire to learn through that hands-on experience and are open to constructive feedback. Um, as it relates to how standing out, that re your resume really is going to highlight the experience in those key role requirements. But additionally, how you demonstrate you take initiative is big. Weave that into your conversation. Um, and how you engage those skills into your extracurricular activities that are related to your area of interest really kind of resonate with the interviewer or the person that you're speaking to because it's connecting the dots in terms of how your experiences match directly to the job that's posted that you've applied for. Um, I like to see passion. Um, even if it has nothing to do with our industry or maybe even with the work environment, Typically, people that are passionate about things outside of work are going to be very passionate about things in their work as well. Um, if you're, you know, if you like cooking and you you try five new recipes every week, you're probably going to be somebody that's interested in getting creative with the customer and finding a solution for their challenges. Um, uh, as far as once you are actually an intern, we'd like for an intern to sort of drive what the summer is going to look like for them. Uh, if you see something you're really interested in, we can pivot pretty quickly um, and maneuver in a way to make it fit what you're looking for and what you're passionate about, because we are looking for somebody that eventually will be full time with us. And the sooner you can identify the things that you're passionate about, the things that you like, as well as the things that your skill set fits, um, the sooner we can kind of track you that direction. Uh, those are kind of some of the important ones for us. Yeah, I, I, I kind of want to dovetail off that. I think presence is a big one for me. I think the resume is great. Um, everyone can have a strong resume and tailor that to a, a specific job posting. But I think for me, when it comes to that interview, or I like to call them coffee chats the first time I meet you, your presence, like, do I feel that you could survive in this fast paced, collaborative environment? Because in the internship, yeah, you are one person, but there's a lot of teamwork that goes and in, goes into it. There's a lot of days where you're with all the five interns. There's also a lot of days you're by yourself having to collaborate with like directors within our student or within our organization. So having a good presence and feeling comfortable and in initial kind of selling yourself to me or one of my recruiting managers is I think the, the ideal thing to set yourself apart because in, in our line of work, you're constantly selling yourself to your counterparts, to, to uh, other um, organizations that we work with, to our directors, to our sales leaders. So kind of that presence I think is what I look for in that ideal candidate that really shines through on that initial, you know, couple of minutes on an interview or when I first meet you in person. And just to jump off of that, um, pretty much at Eli Lilly, we're looking for the same type of motivated candidate. So highly motivated, um, driven leaders, um, you know, students who are comfortable in a client facing role, who's going to be adaptable um and willing to make a difference in someone else's life because that's all, all that the job is about um also um an ability to kind of make your own schedule um so that's some of the flexibility that's afforded in a role 
um, and even during the internship in a pharmaceutical sales role is that you're creating your own routing, you're working with your team to make sure that your routing makes sense as far as where you're going for the day as you're going to visit clients. So a lot of that is um, self-motivation. So we're looking for very self-motivated individuals who are driven and, and willing to go the extra mile. Thank you, Lindsay. I think you've all touched on this a little bit, but what can someone do to stand out for the right reasons on their application? Terry, if you'd like to get us started. Yeah, um, so specifically for our application status, it's really just um, sending in our resume initially. So kind of I mentioned a little bit earlier, but we really look for individuals who have been like active in different like clubs or organizations, um, have taken the opportunity to maybe take on leadership experiences. Um, this could be in an organization, whether or not you decided to be a TA for a class or um, all the different like opportunities that the university has offered you um, as well as as of course, um, you taking initiative on your own. Um, we really do look for um, individuals who have a strong um, GPA in that sense as well, but also have just taken on other internship opportunities. We're not necessarily looking for a cookie cutter um, resume. We're looking for people who have had a lot of different experiences and we're not necessarily super particular in like um, what type of background you do have, um, whether that means like any in major, for example, I'm in gerontology, not really super applicable, but it's okay. Um, I'm working with the organization now. So um, just being able to um, just showcase like your skills and your leadership opportunities are really what we really look for in our applicants. Yeah, that, that all great information. I think everybody here is on the same page. Um, you know, it, keywords are a really big thing with resumes it's uh kind of unfortunate at times a machine is going to judge your resume or application based on some of the keywords titles and industries that you have in there so i would make sure when you're sending an application or you're submitting a resume make sure that you have done a pretty good job of looking at a strong library of keywords that's going to help uh, the system crawl or scrape your resume to kind of get you at the top so you can be seen because you'd be amazed at how many people and outstanding candidates slip through the cracks. And then us recruiters, if we could find those people that slip through the cracks at all times, we would do it. But um, when it comes to a resume, um, uh, progression is very important. What have you learned? Is there progress um, instead of regression? Um, the involvement that you've been in, the volunteer work, community service at, at some capacity, maybe some significant accomplishments that you've had that have separated yourself that's really helped you learn and, and adapt to some things. Um, and I also mentioned student organizations a while, but not everybody um, is accepted into a uh, fraternity or sorority or a social club. Um, but I think another part is uh, try, to, try to get some type of work in somewhere with um, an internship, all these looking for sophomore to junior internships where it's not just a junior to senior internship thing. So um, more and more companies are start, starting to um, hire interns from the freshman to sophomore year. Find a part time job that maybe you can do something on campus that's going to give you some type of skill set. Um, but I think uh, the key words and trying to beat the system with these algorithms and machine learning is uh, going to help you get there. There are some services out there you can find on Upwork. I don't know if anybody uses Fiverr or any of those services that where you can pay somebody a couple bucks to um, get a stronger LinkedIn profile. Um, we're also actually uh, building a system that we're going to try to offer to USC where we're going to eliminate some of this keyword uh, stuff where it's going to give you an opportunity to use a video to um, display yourself in some of those gray areas. So we're going to be happy to roll that out to you all and show uh, what all these kind of doing differently to get you at the top of that, um, that search engine. So um, if you all want to talk about any of this stuff outside of here, we're happy to be a mentor to you, but um, there are plenty of ways to try to beat the system, but I think keywords going to be a big way to get you there. Yes, I definitely agree with everything that everyone has said so far a gpa of 3.0 or higher is something we're looking for um, club involvement diverse experiences um, and a plus would be knowledge of the sales process um, even if it's something as small as being a barista you understand the sales process um, again we're looking for highly motivated individuals if you can show that you've uh, demonstrated leadership ability um, or ability to learn and apply and communicate. 
Um, scientific knowledge is great. That's a plus um, and strong ability to negotiate. Uh, so persuasive skills as well as something we're looking for. But overall, I mean, again, like Ryan said, those keywords is going to be really important. Um, just making sure that you're adding, um, you know, keywords on your resume so that way it can kind of filter through that way. You guys pretty much took everything. I'm kidding. Um, a lot of great stuff from everybody already. Um, one thing that I would say um, is that some of the experiences that you have, whether they're in classes or in groups, you may not realize you're learning something important or that you're you're gaining a new skill or talent there. Um, but some things, even as basic as communication or organization, meeting deadlines, those are important skills. And so make sure you utilize those and think back. And as you're going through your coursework and you're getting projects and capstone projects and all these types of things, um, take notes on the things that you're doing and what you're accomplishing. Um, kind of learning how to spell it out in a resume can be challenging too. So reach out to you know everybody on this in this group in this panel right now. I'm sure would would be glad to help you with adjectives and adverbs and all kinds of things like that to help you spruce it up a little bit. But take some notes of some of the things you're doing. Um, they are experiences, even if they seem minuscule, they can be really important and things that are important skills for um, later on. So uh, we have to take a different approach. We uh, we look at every resume. Um, we we look at everyone, making sure we're not missing anyone. Just from the resume being such a tricky thing, making sure everything's capitalized on uh, all the things that you guys are doing while while in school. But I think the the thing I would say is like your your time management skills, taking on multiple responsibilities at school, whether that's jobs, student orgs. I know everyone's kind of already said that, but. I think the more you show that you can juggle more responsibilities is how you're going to stand out because in the real world, you're constantly doing more than one thing at a time, whether it's your actual job or helping someone out on another project or putting something together for a boss, whatever it is, you're constantly juggling a lot of responsibilities. So highlighting that ability to tackle multiple responsibilities at once, I think is a really easy way to help yourself stand out. And then I know, I think it might've been Ryan progression. Like, is that, you know, growing within a student organization or a social organization you started as like the secretary and work your way up to a vice president or a president, or even at a job, like, did you start as like a bar back and then turn into a bartender or turn into a waiter or whatever it is, kind of that growth within a company is really going to help you stand out. So taking on as many responsibilities as your time allows, uh, school comes first, but, um, doing that can really help you stand out in the crowd. Oh, Kim, you're muted. Yeah, yeah, I sorry, I thought I clicked, I didn't. So we take the same approaches as, as, as Zach. We look at all the resumes we don't have, we don't um, uh, keyword match and, and it's, it's, um, it's a lot, but it's, it's for all those reasons. So we don't miss anybody. And I think everybody touched their thing. And Ryan talked about accomplishments and that's big. The only thing I would build on that is if you've got a data point, whether it's from a project or an experience, data and numbers in resumes stand out. I improved X by Y. And, 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 and make an impact connection and show how you made a difference. That's important. And I think that is a key thing that has candidates stand out when they can show impact. Thanks, everyone. Um, you've all touched on this again a little bit within your answers about the sort of skills, experiences that you look for in standout applicants. Um, can you tell us about the hard and soft skills that students should work on to thrive in your industry and? What any final advice that you would give our students um, for thriving in your industry? Uh, Michael, do you want to get us started? Sure. All right. Um, I would say a lot of them are going to be more soft skills than hard skills. You know, unless you are an engineering student and you've got some background in motor controls or electrical or automation, um, those are going to be some of the things that you may have experience with. Um, for the majority, even a lot of the engineers, especially early on, they may not quite have that experience. Even just YouTubing some things is, is pretty valuable and um, checking out some of our content that we have online as well um, or on our YouTube, um, that's, that's good stuff. Uh, soft skills, confidence, speaking with confidence. I think Ryan 
mentioned this earlier, and I think Zach mentioned it earlier too, your presence is felt. And so as we interview and we're talking to our candidates, we want to get an idea, okay, is this somebody that a customer would like to have a conversation with? Is this somebody that they would trust is not just talking, but they're listening? Um, listening is a great skill. It's a great, important soft skill that um, seems com like common sense and everybody should just be good listeners. We all have ears. It doesn't really work that way. Um, if it's something that you can practice and work on, it is a very important skill and it's highly valued. Um, uh, those, those were kind of the key ones, I would say. I want to build off that as well, because I, I think that's where my company stands too. We're, we're a sales organization. There's not a lot of sales majors out there. So uh, we really pride ourselves on giving you all the tools and resources to be successful in our, in our sales organization. And, and we're kind of one of the most highly regarded sales training programs there is when it just comes to Alcbev and just, just in general. So we'll teach you all those hard skills. It's those soft skills that we really look for. Teamwork, like we touched on, leadership. Humility is a big one to us because it's really competitive and we sometimes it gets served up, uh, you know, a slice of humble pie. So being humble, um, competitive. I think he froze on us. Um, Zach, do you want to continue? I think yeah. he froze on us. Where was I? Competitive? About there, yes. mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd say the last two I'd say is coachability because we're constantly giving feedback to our sales reps, our new managers. Um, there's never really a point in your career at our company where you. We'll come back to Zach. Ryan, do you want to take the question? Sure. Um, you know, soft skills are a, an area of development, I think, for uh, college students. I think, um, you know, this pandemic, a lot of people have been built a, a tough hand because um, you went virtual. And with that virtual, things became very transactional. And so there wasn't an opportunity, um, like some of us that may have gradu uh, graduated in the early 2000s, to uh, be able to be in person all the time to build some of those relationships. So um, uh, a, a few of, our, of my colleagues here, I mentioned some great things, listening um, uh, skills. That's a very important asset to being a, a leader is a strong, uh, strong listener. Um, I think uh, managing yourself is going to be very important. How well you can manage your day-to-day -day priorities, how you time manage things are going to be very important. And I think that's probably one of the biggest lessons that all of us former college students or college students learn is how to manage your time wisely. Communicating with impact. How do you how do you articulate your answers? How do you drive um, things? Cooperating with others is an important thing. Is how do, how well do you work as a team? Um, because a lot of things that you're going to do with all these, you're going to work as a team. Um, how do you lead people? Um, how do you uh, effectively communicate with them? It, there are many different styles of leadership that you can have. Um, They're going to work for different people because everybody um, takes feedback a, a certain way. Uh, for example, athletes, a lot of them like tough love, direct feedback. Um, some individuals really prefer more of an empathetic and, and a softer approach of things. I think driving decisions and results, and I think being able to manage change are going to be pretty important skill sets that you can have. Um, competitiveness is a, big, a, a pretty big thing too, but um, Zach mentioned something uh, that was pretty big, is being able to accept and take feedback is a very important skill because if you want to be coached and managed and you want to ultimately grow as a human being and as a professional, being able to take that uh, feedback in stride is ultimately what's going to help you grow. And don't be afraid of failure. Um, those are the things that grow you as a human being. And, and the more you can fail, just keep failing forward and, and grow from that. I'm going to hop on in here. Um, specifically, I concur with what everyone has said. I feel like there's not too much for me to add in my sense as well, but for sure, having like those project management opportunities, making sure, um, similar to what Ryan said, like taking lead on a project and being able, you are going to collaborate with a lot of individuals and in our role, you will be collaborating with a lot of team members as well. So maybe becoming a leader in that sense, as well as um, of course, having like more effective communication. Um, you can always practice that, whether it's like public speaking or whether it's just having conversations with individuals, using that active listening, being able to regurgitate information properly and effectively is really important. Um, and of course, for us, we also have like a 
sales aspect. Maybe you don't necessarily, you can't necessarily sell to the people um, around you in that sense, but maybe seeing opportunities of maybe people are coming to sell to you, like on college campuses, um, when we come to the career fair, all of the organizations are trying to sell to you. So maybe taking some of that and being able to see how individuals are talking to one another um, and sell essentially their roles is almost a good way to look at it from your own perspective as well. So those are a couple of the things. So as far as hard skills go, again, echo what everyone else has said, that's something that you would be taught on the job in training. Um, so we'll teach you um, product and customer knowledge. You'll understand the disease states in which you're selling uh, so that you feel comfortable once training rolls around. But as far as soft skills, uh, relationship building is huge. I know everyone's mentioned act listening, but that's definitely big in sales. Um, listening to understand versus listening to just speak and continue on. Um, time management is huge, uh, especially if you're creating your own schedule, you have to make it work for you and make it work for your clients as well. Uh, um, and then also critical thinking, you know, different things come up on day to day and, and you have to change in your schedule if needed. So we're looking for um, kind of all of those soft skills as well. Yeah, there's not a whole lot left. So the, the only thing that, that I would say is, so we're a virtual first company. We're a remote company. It's a dynamic workforce model. So you can work from anywhere as long as in the continental United States, for sure. Um, but a biggest, one of the bigger things that, that we we're tackling is getting people comfortable with putting themselves out there. So keeping yourself relevant, keeping yourself engaged. So setting up, you know, coffee chats with your peers, coffee chats with your boss. So making sure that you're demonstrating that that engagement in that initiative, even in a virtual setting, because in a virtual setting, and that goes along with self accountability and everything everyone else has said. But if you're in a company that is 100% remote, you've got to be proactive and take initiative to keep yourself connected and getting to know everybody that's out there. Thank you, Kim. And Zachary, I want to give you a chance to finish what you were saying. Um, I know you're, you were cut out earlier, so if you'd like to continue. Oh no, Zach, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Um, Zach did share his uh, LinkedIn with you all. Um, everyone here shared, most here shared their LinkedIn and are happy to connect. Thank you, Giselle, for putting that in the chat. Um, it was it has been wonderful spending the last hour with you all. Thank you, panelists, for sharing your industry insights with our students. Um, this has been a very insightful afternoon, and all of us here at USC are very grateful to each of you for spending the last hour sharing your journeys and advice for succeeding in your industries and for helping our students really stand out as applicants. Um, it is close to 3 p.m., and I want to be mindful of everyone's time. So with that, thank you for joining us, everyone. That concludes this I3 panel. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. It was an honor. Looking forward thank to meeting you. everybody.